congratulations, everyone. We made it to Friday. I hope you all get to enjoy the long weekend and holidays and relax. I'm Stella Chung, and in today's fix, the day before servers are shutting down next month, Insomniac Games responds to their cyber attack, and we have some details on how you can choose a unique story path in Cyberpunk 2. <laughs> The day before finally launched in early access this December on the 7th, and the publisher Mytona just announced that the game servers will be shutting down January 22nd. In case you missed the whole drama and controversy around the day before, here's a quick recap. Fantastic, the devs behind the day before debuted a teaser trailer back in January 2021. All of the survival crafting game enthusiasts were super excited, me included, to have a new game that could possibly replicate that Daisy feel that we wanted so badly. Then came the day before his first scheduled release date in June. 2022. That day came and went, with Fantastic claiming the reason for the delay was because they were moving the game to Unreal Engine 5. Following that delay, reports emerged accusing Fantastic of operating a volunteering culture, which was a euphemism that meant they weren't paying all of their employees. Some volunteers were unpaid workers who contributed to game development, but would be instead given cool rewards, participation certificates, and free codes. Man, you know what I love? I love getting game codes instead of a reliable paycheck. Then, in January 2023, as if that wasn't enough, the day before was removed from Steam because Fantastic didn't trademark the name and someone else had already claimed it. Fantastic claimed that they weren't aware of the issue and that this would now result in another delay. Oh, and let's not forget that Fantastic's gameplay trailers, which released in 2023, were almost frame for frame copies of the Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War Zombies reveal trailer. That did not help their fake game allegations at all. This all prompted a lot of fans to scrutinize the day before, and everyone was starting to believe this game wasn't real. A lot of people accused the game of being a scam, convinced we would never see this game actually release. Fantastic claimed later this year that there would be no game delays, which wound up not being true. There were two more before the game would finally drop December 7th, only on Steam in early access. And it definitely was something. There were rampant bugs, performance issues, and a lack of any real content that players were promised in those gorgeous trailers. Listen, even for early access, the day before was in a really rough state. Fantastic spoke on the decision to launch it exclusively on PC in early access and not on other consoles by stating, it will be early access on Steam since this is our first huge game and there may be unforeseen circumstances. The full version release will happen when we are certain this is the best version of the game possible, and we believe that player feedback and involvement will greatly contribute to achieving this goal. At that point, if I was a spokesperson for Fantastic, I would have just stopped talking and promising anything. Because five days after the early access release of the day before, Fantastic announced the closure of their studio. Players who did purchase the day before were furious because they were under the impression that the game would be supported in the future with updates. Questions about refunds surfaced. The publisher claimed they were working with Steam to facilitate refunds, but I honestly would not hold my breath on anything they claim. But Mytona stated that Steam will proactively refund all remaining players. Today, Fantastic has officially ceased operations and the day before is being retired with servers shutting off next month, January 22nd. What a ride. Insomniac Games had a really bad week with a malicious hack that produced an incredibly devastating series of leaks. But today, Insomniac posted on X slash Twitter to comment on the situation and how they're doing. The statement reads, Thank you for the outpouring of compassion and unwavering support. It's deeply appreciated. We're both saddened and angered about the recent criminal cyber attack on our studio and the emotional toll it's taken on our dev team. We have focused inwardly for the last several days to support each other. We are aware that the stolen data includes personal information belonging to our employees, former employees, and independent contractors. It also includes early development details about Marvel's Wolverine for PlayStation 5. We continue working quickly to determine what data was impacted. This experience has been extremely distressing for us. We want everyone to enjoy the games we develop as intended and as our players deserve. However, like Logan, Insomniac is resilient. Marvel's Wolverine continues as planned. The game is in early production and will no doubt greatly evolve throughout development, as do all our plans. While we appreciate everyone's enthusiasm, we will share official information about Marvel's Wolverine when the time is right. On behalf of everyone here at Insomniac, thank you for your ongoing support during this challenging time. The hackers who infiltrated Insomniac's infrastructure demanded 50 Bitcoin, which 
is roughly $2 million to not release the information they had stolen. When the deadline to pay the ransom passed, the hackers released 1.67 terabytes of Insomniac's data to the public. So I saw a lot of people saying this was Insomniac's fault for not paying the ransom, but fuck that. The hackers would have kept the data and felt validated to keep threatening Insomniac and the other companies with these awful tactics. We need to remember that Insomniac is the victim here, as well as all of the company's employees whose personal information was leaked. Cyberpunk 2077 has gotten so many updates this year, and I personally still have to finish Phantom Liberty, but we already have more information on Cyberpunk 2, codenamed Orion. The sequel is in development, and CD Projekt Red narrative director Philip Weber went on to the Answered podcast to talk about it. Weber spoke on how the life paths in 2077, Nomad, Corpo, or Street Kid didn't really influence too much gameplay, and how we wanted to fix that in future titles. I think this is a thing where in the future, that's, as an example, something we would like to improve. Proof, since I do think we gave a promise there that maybe in the end we did not really sell. The game begins with this very specific thing. He can be a nomad, a corpo, a street kid, but then it sometimes goes away a little bit. We move it all together, then sometimes you can do it, Weber said. As a quest designer, I think in retrospect, we can see the old topic, given more experience, given more time, I think maybe we would make it a bit less muddled than we did it there. Weber is currently working on the next Witcher game coding Polaris alongside the lead quest designer, Blaget Augustin, who also had some thoughts on the way that the life paths work in Cyberpunk. So whatever you used to do, there's a clear moment where it all crumbles, right? And you start a new life with Jackie. Obviously, we would like it to matter more, but I think the way it plays out right now, it's like you come from a certain kind of life, and that life has ended. It's in the past, and now you're living this new life, which ends, spoilers, in the prologue. And then you have to deal with the consequences of that. There's not too much more information out on Cyberpunk 2, but we do know that CD Projekt Red has stated that it's determined to not repeat the same practices that led to Cyberpunk 2077's launch. They've been able to turn 2077 around so well, I want to believe that they've learned a lot and can carry that forward. Did you buy the day before? I've been following that game's development from the start, and let me tell you, I had my doubts from the moment I saw that first game trailer. That was way too good to be true, and I am incredibly sad to say that I was right. It is not a good I told you so moment. Anyways, if you want to watch more on the day before and the worst games of 2023, check out our video on the worst reviewed games of 2023. It's kind of fun. I'm Stella Chung. I hope you have a fantastic holiday. Keep on gaming, and I'll see you next time.